Dear Deary. I think I figured out what I'm going to do. Remember I was having that confusion time moment issue thing with my writing Monday or writing Wednesday or whatever, you know, theming thing to go along with TMI Tales Tuesday. Think, think I figured it out. And you know who I had to thank for it? Netflix. Well, not quite. I mean, um, it's not like I'm going to do, you know, Netflix Monday because that makes no damn sense. And it's not alliterative at all. Um, <clears throat> so I was watching The Hunger Games because I had never seen it until today. Uh, that would be the, the first one, not the sequel that's out right now. Um, I was watching that. I was trying to figure out, okay, what else can I watch? There's got to be something else I can watch because I'm caught up on everything on YouTube. So, I, yeah. And I saw um, TED Talks. Now, TED Talks, I don't remember what TED stands for. T-E-D. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, a lot of it is, you know, they, they break the... There. All done. Be careless. No. Um... <clears throat> They break things up into different categories. You'll have, you know, uh, technical, you know, TED Talks. And they'll have social TED Talks and whatnot. And the, the, the series that I was watching in particular is called Life Hacks. And basically, um, different kind of, I guess you would call them self-help kind of things. But um, the two that I watched today, one was on meditation. It's called... Um, Oh, what's it called? All it takes is ten mindful minutes, and that is the the last one. There are eight episodes in this particular um, series, and uh, that was the first one I watched. Was the last one because I'm contrarian like that. Uh, and then I watched the first one, which is called "Your Body Language Shapes Who You Are." Um, and I found myself thinking, you know, this is kind of cool stuff and so as i'm watching these two episodes more because for example meditation is something i have always had a hell of a time with i mean it's i just cannot get myself to do it or at least do what i think it's supposed to be um and one of the two guys that i dog sit for uh the older gay couple uh carrie when i first met him at the uh, the VA center when we were in a um, an LGBT support group at the VA he was one of the facilitators of the group and one of the first things that we talked about in the group was that, you know that he, when he was introducing himself he said that you know he he does you know meditation and blah 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 and I was like and he 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 saw me doing he's like you have a problem with meditation I said well I don't I don't like it doesn't make me want to fight you know it's not like the sharks and the jets you know by that i mean west side story and the are using capulets kind of thing um but yeah i said i just i've never been able to do it and because you know, i'm just i'm too you know spun up all the time it's it's like an army of squirrels in there and they're all just hopped up on pcp um it's very difficult to get shut, to shut down long enough to meditate and he said that's part of your problem. You don't understand what meditation is actually supposed to be about. He said, I'll, I'll teach you at some point. Still kind of waiting on that, Gary. Just to say, <laughs> now that you're, you and you and Bill are looking for land somewhere else so that you can move, you might want to get on that teaching me to meditate thing. Well, anyway, so I was watching this, um, this Ted talk on, on Netflix and it's pr almost certainly on YouTube. If you don't have Netflix, you can find it there. Um, but one of the things that the guy said in the TED Talk is that people have this you know, preconception that, you know, you're sitting cross-legged on the floor and there's incense and herbal tea. And he said, no, <laughs> that is not what this is about. So that's not how meditation is. That's not how it works. That's not what you do. What you need to do is you just take time to sit quietly and do nothing. And I mean nothing. Don't plan out what you're going to do tomorrow. Don't think about what you did yesterday. Do nothing. Don't stare at the ball and think, oh, I wonder if the dog's going to... No. Let it go. And learn to just be aware of the moment. And thoughts will come in and out. And you just let them. But you sit back. 
and you watch as these thoughts anyway i'm not going to try to the guy explains it so much better than i could the second one which was the first one it's very backwards um in the way that i did this but watching the first one about body posture um i've always been somewhat aware of of body posture just because in drama class it was you know very important to pay attention to what you were doing physically not just you know with your face like you know, your your performance you're trying to convey your emotion through your face is your entire body is an instrument uh when you go, when i took you know intro to speech communication in high school um it's you know another thing that you ironically or perhaps not the drama teacher was ultra also our intro to speech communication teacher and you know she said in both cases as an actor or as a speaker, you need to know what to do with your hands. And if you don't know what to do with your hands while you're communicating with people, it shows. It shows in major, major ways. But it's not just your face and your hands. You need to know what you're doing with your entire body and how you convey yourself to someone else. And her, her thing, and if you do, um, if you do a search for uh, Amy Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y, on, well, I'll, I'll also have the link below to this specific thing. It's a YouTube link, so it'll be easy enough to find. Um, it's the, the exact speech. <gasps> My tea is steeping. That's why I'm yawning. Um, that and I'm tired. But, so, her story, amazing. Really, really cool. And the concept of fake it till you make it and how well that translates into reality um and how true it actually is very 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 cool um speech that she gave and like i said the link will be down below um definitely give it a listen it's like 20 minutes long and it is worth every single minute of it um i definitely encourage you to watch it whether you're a type a personality who's always you know I know exactly what we should do, you know, kind of thing. And, or, or whether you're, you know, it's the, the mousy little person sitting back in the corner going, I don't know, I'll just do what everybody else wants. Whatever. Whatever. Also, mascots. I mean, not because of, <laughs> sorry, we're looping back. What to do with your hands. That's when, when I see a lot of people who are in costume for the first time, uh, especially if they're in animal costume. This, this happens a lot with first suiters when they first, get their, their their first fursuit or their first you know behaving and they're performing in fursuit a lot of times they'll do this thing it's like this 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 bunny position cute little, cute little bunny i think was what we called it and it it's an indication that you don't know what to do with your hands or paws in this case um if you're not playing a bunny there's really not much reason to do that um even if you are playing a bunny you don't see the tricks rabbit do that very often um so yeah just learning what to do with your hands um <laughs> the the photo shoot that i mentioned that um we've done before and we're going to do again um the photographer asked me he said so th this next photo shoot which he's talking about the last one you know that we're going to do i need to you're going to be in first suit for part of this but it's just a head and the and the paws and that's all you're going to be wearing a, like a mechanics coveralls for the rest of it i'm like oh, okay fine no problem and while we were doing the recording or the the photography taking the shots and everything and he's you know telling me to stand like this stand like this stand like this pose like this do this and you know move your arm out a little bit blah 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 whatever um and at one point he was like okay um i don't know um tell me a story and that flipped the switch suddenly i was not being a mannequin posed by someone else. Um, I knowing what the suit kind of looked like and, you know, cause it's kind of a, kind of a Rottweiler kind of look with the, with the mechanics. So I just, I'm sitting, I'm in the suit and I've got a cigar in one hand and I just took on this, this affectation of this character who sounded a bit like this and everything. So I started telling him this story about this one time we was down at the state fair and, and Suddenly he's just, oh my God, and he's going crazy because suddenly now I've gone from this mannequin that he is posing in different, now I suddenly I'm performing and there's a lot more physical, you know, body communication. And he told me later while he was, you know, editing the photos and whatnot, 
that I was much more engaged with the camera when I was telling the story, that there was a lot more life to the character. And it's because it's not a mannequin, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's part of what it is. I, how does this have anything to do with what I'm going to be doing on Mondays, I think? Well, I haven't told you what I'm going to be doing on Mondays, but I think this is it. I think I'm going to have Motivational Monday. And Monday's, Monday's a hard day for a lot of people. Now, for the people who are in Australia, it will be, oh God, Wednesday, I think, by the time they start watching it, because I usually record in the evenings. So I will either have to start recording Monday's vlog Sunday night. That way people can watch it Monday and then have the stuff to deal with on Monday. Because, you know, as you guys have seen, I mean, it's 1035 right now here in California. But this, this thing, by the time I'm finished editing, well, I don't really am editing consists of cutting off the front end and the back end and putting the, the, the fade to blacks and syncing up the audio tracks. That takes me a grand total of about three minutes to do once I figured out how to do it. Um, and, oh my God, you know, but still, by the time it's rendered in, in, you know, here locally on the machine and then uploaded and then processed by YouTube, it'll be Tuesday. You know, because if I recorded it, if I start recording at 10 o'clock at night, it's going to be past midnight. It'll be technically Tuesday by the time it's actually aired. So I may have to shuffle things a bit. I may have to start recording. I may have to be recording a day ahead of schedule so that when people get up Monday morning, there's, you know, motivation Monday and they can watch it before they go to work or whatever. And even then for my, I think, two viewers in Australia, it'll still be Tuesday by the time they see it. Because they're a day ahead of us. Damn it. They're like 16 hours ahead of us. Anyway. Um, or 16 hours ago tomorrow. Something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. But that's what I'm thinking. It was Motivational Monday. And then TMI Tuesday. And then Writing Wednesday. And then, I don't know, Thursday. I mean, that's not what it wouldn't be called. I don't know Thursday. Because, again, that has no alliteration to it. And it's not clever. Um... I could do Thruster Thursday every, every every Thursday and just talk about what's going on in space. No, because what if nothing happened in space? I mean, there's always something happening in space, but you know what I mean. Um, I'll figure out Thursday and Friday. Um, yeah. So Thursday, here we are on Thursday. And I, there was something else that I wanted to mention. Um... Oh, I know what it is, because uh, we're at just about 13 minutes now. Uh, so I told you I watched the, the Hunger Games. Um, if you watch the uh, All It Takes is 10 Mindful Minutes, which is the guy who's talking about meditation, and he's got the what I thought were tomatoes, but they're actually balls. Um, he's doing juggling. And one of the things that I, I learned very quickly when I first started trying to learn juggling, and I didn't see it through is that a lot of times I try too hard. I start, I'm trying to plot, you know, where every hand is moving, where every ball or bag or whatever is moving. And I'm, I'm focusing on it so much that I'm, I'm screwing myself over and, and I'm screwing everything up because I'm trying to make my hand move this way at this point and release this bag. While, whereas once you've done juggling for a little while, you practiced just enough, you get to a point where you can keep your elbows locked at your side and just let your arms do the work. The muscle memory is there. Let them go, and they will do what they need to do. And I could stand there with my eyes closed, toss, and that, that bag would land in my other hand every single time, as long as I don't think about it too much. But I had to think about it a little bit. And this is something that he covers in the video, is that there's this mid-ground of not thinking about it enough and thinking about it too much. And you want to get right in that, that happy space, right in between. So I have discovered in the course of, because I have what is called sprinting juggler syndrome, where I start throwing ahead of me, and I have to take a step forward to catch it. But now, since I'm in motion, my body automatically throws the next bag ahead of me. And so I have to take a step forward. And I wind up chasing these bags, because I'm constantly throwing them ahead of me. You either practice facing in front of a wall, or if that is too distracting, do it in front of a window or a sliding glass door. So it doesn't look, I mean, there's, there's, there's clearly, you can see out. It's not like you're 
facing a wall. But eventually, let the muscle memory form. Let it do what it needs to do, and you'll have a much easier time. Practice in front of a window that is closed, or a sliding glass door that is closed. Um, finally, since this is kind of the inaugural um, thing for Motivational Monday, I'm going to tell you one of the first lines actually the first lines from a poem uh, may not be a poem i never learned the whole thing i only learned the first part of it because that was what actually meant something to me and the rest of it got a little bit preachy and as soon as it was like and god I'm, nope i'm out thank you bye but the first part always meant something very very important to me and it is from a lovely I presume it's lovely. Like I said, I've, I don't usually pay much attention to the rest of it, just to the first part. The thing, the thing that I'm talking about is called Desiderata. And the first lines are, Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and always remember what peace there may be in silence. That has always meant a tremendous amount to me. Because when things start getting too crazy and psychotic and jumbled and all over the place to me a lot of times just taking a moment to go and find someplace quiet sit and not think to just say okay i i hear all these thoughts i hear i hear you all just do me a favor and just give me two minutes to shut up just shut up for just two minutes and i swear i will figure you all out and perhaps that's meditation Perhaps it's not. Most of the time, I can't do it unless I've reached a breaking point. And I am either going to have to meditate or kill someone. But either one would really solve the problem at hand. Fortunately, I've never gone for the latter. Oh, but I've gotten so close. Anyway, yeah, just, you know, if I ever tell you, I just need two minutes. Two minutes of silence. I'll be right back. Don't push it. And I just watched The Hunger Games, so I know how to... <laughs> 17 and a half minutes? Right, that's long enough, I think. Always remember what peace there may be in silence.